This is iFaith video message 58 called Walking the Walk. Right now we're going through the material in the New Testament from John. We had a lesson on long distance faith and one on the blind man, chapters 4 and 9 of the Gospel. Now we're into the letters of John and there are three and we'll end in the book of Revelation. If you want more, I would invite you to find a tour through John at my website and that's 50 days or 50 podcasts uh, which go into much greater depth. And also, there are always the New Testament chapter studies, also at the website, which go through every verse in the New Testament. John's writing is easily recognizable. It doesn't remind you of Matthew, Mark, or Luke. He uses simple words, very simple uh, vocabulary. Words like light and darkness and day and night and remain, uh, flesh, uh, to see, and so forth. Very easy words, but they're, they're given extra meaning, and sometimes double meaning, spiritual meanings. Statements can be easily misunderstood. We see this even in the uh, letter of 1 John. Everyone who believes Jesus is the Christ is born of God. That's 1 John 5.1. Well, does that mean you don't have to obey? Oh, no, that would contradict chapter 2. Does it mean Muslims are saved? Because Muslims believe Jesus is the Messiah uh, and the Word of God and a prophet. No, it you see, you've got to look at the greater work, the context, and he's actually contrasting two lifestyles in the, in the letter of 1 John. No one who is born of God will continue to sin because God's seed remains in him and he cannot go on sinning because he's been born of God. That's chapter 3, verse 9. So if you're born again, it's impossible to sin. So what does that mean that whatever you do, even if it looks sinful, it's actually okay? Or does it mean that you're so holy you cannot sin? or that those people who claim the doctrine of sinless perfection are correct, that if you're really saved, you don't sin? I think that would contradict chapter one. <laughs> chapter one assumes that, that we're walking in the light, but still sin is being forgiven. So we've gotta look at context. Um, in the, our series on John, we're focusing on uh, various terms. We've, we've explored the word see and the concept of blindness uh, in the previous talk, we'll be coming back to that in an interesting way uh, when we get into the little little letter of, of Second John. Uh, but I'd like to focus on uh, the word walk in just a moment. So um, thank you for being part of this series, and uh, I hope it's not too simple for you. I'm hoping it's helping you if you are coming to faith, if you're not yet a Christian, if you're a younger Christian and you, you're feeding and growing. I know it's basic. But it can also be a refresher even for older believers. Walking is good. Here in Scotland, we walk a lot. Europeans don't drive as much as North Americans. Uh, we usually walk two or three miles a day for ourselves, for prayer walks, for time with the dog. And walking is mentioned throughout uh, 1 John, uh, particularly in chapters 1 and 2. It's mentioned in 2 John in a couple of verses. It's mentioned um, in 3 John, and walking is also mentioned in the gospel. And I'm not talking about verses that say that Peter walked down the road. I'm talking about where the word walk means our lifestyle, how we walk. It's our spiritual life. Walking in the light is what we want to do, not walking in the dark. And as we'll see, walking in the light can be equated with, well, let me save that for just a few moments because that's the point of this message. 1 John 1, 5. This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you, God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus his son purifies us from all sin. And then in chapter 2, my dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. But if anybody does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. What do we notice here? Well, walking in the light doesn't mean you're sinless. We're walking in the light. It says, then our sins are purified. The blood of Jesus purifies us. Now, we're not purifying ourselves. We don't save ourselves. But we do need to live in a certain way, with a certain disposition towards God. Walking in the light is integrally connected with Christian fellowship. It says if we walk in the light, 
we have fellowship with one another. Someone who's, not, who's determined to walk in the light does not engage in deceit. Someone who has not decided to walk in the light is always trying to pretend and shade things and mislead, make us think they're better than they are. When we're moving in the same direction as someone else, if that person's trying to walk in the light and we're trying to do the same, then we share goals. We have, therefore, a bond. And so this passage I've just read it's not about salvation by faith alone or by a confession of faith. It's about genuine honesty inward and outward that we mustn't lie. We, we need to uh, be open, uh, confess sins. This is what this passage is saying in 1 John uh, chapter 1. Let's look in chapter 2. We know we've come to know him, Jesus. We know we've come to know him if we keep his commands. Whoever says, I know him, but does not do what he commands is a liar. The truth's not in that one. But if anyone obeys his word, love for God is truly made complete in him. And this is how we know we're in him. Whoever claims to live in him must walk as Jesus did. There's that word again, walk. Walking in the light means obedience. Right? He said already, if we claim fellowship with him and we walk in the darkness, we lie. We don't live out the truth. So walking in the light means obedience. If anyone hates a brother or sister, he's in the darkness, and he walks in the darkness. He doesn't know where he's going because the darkness has blinded him. See, 1 John's a very short letter. If you just read separate verses, you can get the wrong idea. But read the whole thing, make the connections, and you'll see he's teaching exactly what Jesus taught in the Gospel of John. So walking in the light means obedience. Obedience leads to love for God being made complete, as we just read, that means maturity. And love being complete, it's a relational thing. Of course, it's a relationship with God. But in John's letters, the focus is even more on relationships with fellow Christians, others who are walking as we're walking, the same direction, the same road. Walking like Jesus is not some literal uh, you know, wearing sandals because he wore sandals or walking on water or walking everywhere, not using a bicycle or a car or a helicopter because he walked everywhere. No, it's about the heart, and we know that. And we shouldn't be silly about this. This is important stuff. Walking is about life, and only in, in obedience are we walking as Jesus did. Now, if we put this all together, what does this mean? Again, I'm repeating myself, but so does John in this letter. Walking in the light means walking as Jesus did. That's chapter 1, verse 6, 7, walking in the light. And chapter 2, verse 6, Jesus, uh, walking as Jesus did. It doesn't mean perfection. It means sincere intent. And that affects our lifestyle, our walk. What did Jesus teach? How did he live? If we're supposed to walk the way he walked, then, well, we should listen to him. And so I have an acronym for you. I hardly ever do this anymore, but I do have an acronym. That is the first letter of each word, and at the end it spells something. First John speaks frequently of the word of life. The word of life is Jesus Christ, and his word is in us. If we say we've not sinned, his word is not in us, 110. Whoever keeps his word, 25. The old commandment is the word you've heard, 27. The word of God abides in you, 2.14. So we are to be people of the word. That means we, have, we can't just not think about Jesus. We need to make sure in our day we stay focused because the word is in us. It affects our decisions, our thinking. And Jesus is the word in one sense, but so is the message from God. And yet Jesus is the message from God. Fascinating stuff. Second, authenticity, genuine spirituality. This is what we're called to in 1 John. Uh, not pretending to be better than we are, but being vulnerable, confessing. Genuine spirituality that is personal, that is daily, that is modest. This is what Jesus taught. For example, in the Sermon on the Mount. Authenticity means dealing with conflict directly. Don't pretend everything's okay if you know you're not getting on with somebody. Deal with conflict, privately at first, publicly if necessary. 
but seek resolution. Strive for humility. That means openness. It means a learning spirit and dropping the airs and pretenses. Dropping this uh, sense why well, I, I don't really need you, brother. We are called to be genuine, honest, and open. That's what authenticity is. So there's the word, there's authenticity. Thirdly, love. And all of John's writing is about love. Revelation may mention it less, but it's there in the background. In this great letter, we're called to love brothers and sisters. But Jesus also taught we're to love our enemies. We're to care about one another in practical ways. John 3.16 is a very famous verse, but it's got a perfect parallel, a very nice parallel in 1 John 3.16. We're to share with the needy, beginning with those in the fellowship of Christ. We are to love others and to be kind. Even if we cannot trust or continue a relationship with an offender, someone who's hurt us, we're still called to be kind. We're to pray with an awareness of our own need for forgiveness. Because Jesus taught that if we don't forgive others, God won't forgive us. That's not an empty threat. It means we could become unforgiven. I don't want that to happen to me or anybody. Kindness is generosity. It's remembering how the Lord has forgiven us. And when we are aware of that, it changes how we view others. We're not so negative. We're not so critical. We're not so impatient. And we care. See, love isn't just a vague feeling. It is made concrete when we're kind to others. Acts of generosity, which we can do frequently uh, to our spouses, to our families, to, to our neighbors, even to strangers. Put it all together. Word, authenticity, love, kindness. That spells walk. All right. Hope you enjoyed the short talk from 1 John. Brothers and sisters, let's walk as Jesus did. In our next I Faith message, we'll be in the last chapter of 1 John, and the title is The Light Burden. Thank you for being part of I Faith.